What's up, everybody? Just hanging out here in uh, Tampa, Florida. Just a random trip out here, but I had a chance to uh, kind of poke around and I had a little rental car, so I got to do some shore fishing and uh, hit up a ton of different spots. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of combine all of the fishing that I did out here into uh, a short little video and maybe stay tuned till the end. I'm gonna take one of the fish that I caught here and bring them back to New York City and do a little catch and cook. So uh, I hope you enjoy this video. So I found the shore fishing in Tampa to be kind of tricky. I tried artificial lures for a little while and I could see fish pretty much everywhere at all the spots with my polarized glasses, but I couldn't get them to hit artificial lures. So I went and got some live crabs, an aerator bucket and some shrimp. And I started catching fish, um, but my immediate impression of Tampa, Florida is it's kind of a bait state like or a bait town, like you, you need bait to catch, fit, to catch fish. Um, but the first marina that I went to, I caught a nice little mangrove snapper on a live, uh, live shrimp and uh, Carolina rig on the bottom. But what is it? What is this fish? A mangrove snapper. Nice. So that's cool. And then I walked over and I talked to these marine police Hello. officers, uh, like just like try and get a, a feel of the area, and they were pretty helpful. So I kind of walked around a bit of the same marina, and then I met these locals. These locals were super cool. They had a bow and arrow, and they were shooting sheep's head, and they gave me some great advice. You know, told me about the kind of pressure in the area, and uh, told me some spots to go to. And one of them names was Mark. Bob. Bob. I'm Mark, man. Hey, Mark. Nice, nice to, meet, to you. meet you. And Mark was super cool. Um, so I packed up my things. I went to this long pier and didn't catch anything but a few pinfish. And I know you can live line pinfish. I tried it at a few spots, but I didn't really have heavy tackle with me. Uh, I just wasn't getting anything on the live line. But the next day, I kind of woke up early and I went and... Uh, I've never really seen alligators close up in person, like wild alligators. I'm not sure if they're crocodiles or alligators, but so I went to this this place that had sunshine bass. Apparently there's a sunshine bass here and um, alligators. I haven't seen an alligator since I've been here in Florida. So I really want to see an alligator. And um, Sunshine bass are like a hybrid of female white bass and a male striped bass. And I just thought it'd be cool to catch one. So I went out to this, this reservoir place and talked to some nice people, got in some great conversations, saw some huge gators, which was cool. And, uh, you know, from New York City, you don't see alligators in the wild. So that was cool. And then uh, kind of walked around, saw these beautiful trees. I got kind of lost in these beautiful trees, shot some B-roll of these beautiful trees. But I really wasn't catching anything, just some, some alligator sightseeing. So then I went over to the Gulf of Mexico. This spot looks awesome because I've never been to the Gulf of Mexico before. And that was in clear water. Uh, outside Tampa and I fished this inlet which is pretty cool uh, talked to some nice people I caught this little flounder I don't know what kind of flounder it was but so small yeah that was cool and then I went to the beach I fished the beach for a little bit um, I'm pretty sure I saw some manatees I saw some snook kind of running along the beach but I didn't catch any of those uh, snook but it was cool to see like some big fish in the surf but I did catch a couple of these like small Jack Creval. That was cool. And then, uh, you know, the next day I woke up and I fished this inlet and I caught a ton of mangrove snapper at this inlet, like a whole bunch of mangrove snapper, pinfish, and this pretty cool spade fish. I think that's called a spade fish. I'm not sure. And I never caught a spade fish before, so that was cool. Um, but then like this really gnarly clouds rolled in, so I decided to call it. I didn't want to get hit by lightning. Um, and it's interesting, like in Florida, the street lights are neon blue. And if anyone knows the reason why they're neon blue, I would love to know. I don't know if it's the bugs or for what the deal is, but I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so the next day, since that inlet was really fishy, I went back and uh, fish at sunrise, woke up real early. And it was really interesting. This this big barge boat went by 
Um, and these like kind of uh, tugboats were keeping it centered in the inlet. And the second that it passed by, it got really fishy. And all these Spanish mackerel kind of showed up. I lost the first one. But I threw some shrimp on a jig head and just kind of like jigged it just like, you know, any other jig. Um, like cast or retrieve like an artificial. And I got a, a nice Spanish mackerel. This feels good. Whatever this is. This feels real good. It's a trout. Not sure what this is. It's a Spanish mackerel. Heck yeah. I'm gonna eat him. Sick. Spanish mackerel. Sick. Um, so I was psyched on that. So I brought the Spanish mackerel back to the place I was staying, uh, sliced it up, filleted it up and uh, put it in my cooler and then flew back to New York City with it. And so I've been wanting to make like a really colorful dish for a number of months now. And I thought that the Spanish mackerel could be a nice opportunity to make sort of like a Spanish mackerel fruit salad type dish. And they've had these dragon fruit at the market near me for a while. They're like pretty expensive, but I just splurged and I got one of these dragon fruits. And I got some radishes, cucumber, ginger, lemon, orange, and like um, some kind of tart mixed greens. And so I plated uh, a bed of mixed greens, thinly sliced some ginger, uh, and then I sliced some cucumber and radishes, placed those around the, the bed of greens, and squeezed some lemon on top of that. And then I, I cut the dragon fruit up into slices and built kind of like a tabletop for the mackerel to sit on top of and squeeze some orange over it. And this is the first time I had dragon fruit before, but I would say it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the texture of a banana and the taste of like a kiwi and an orange or maybe like a pear. I don't know, it's kind of got a unique taste to it. Um, a little mushy, but really, really good. Uh, probably closer to a kiwi, but then I cooked the Spanish mackerel up in the wok, placed that on top of the dragon fruit, and gave an orange squeeze to kind of like marry the flavors together, and this dish tasted incredible. It was like the flavors were bridged together, the dish had a crunchy, light, kind of like springtime vibe to it, and you know, it was nice to experiment with more fruit uh, flavored dishes and you know fruit and fish and uh, kind of yeah, I don't know it felt like summer spring like you know very happy type vibe and uh, wasn't heavy um, everything was just really light and I, I liked it a lot this is a this dish was a nice introduction for getting into like more colorful dishes which is really what I'm trying to do and kind of like make up my own um dishes uh, which is kind of the goal of these catching cooks but uh yeah i don't know my my impression of tampa is it's it was cool kind of tough to fish from shore um definitely like a florida's like a bait state i would say that bait's gonna outrule artificial and you know i didn't have a ton of confidence so you know using bait is kind of kind of nice when you don't have a ton of confidence i'm sure artificials would work but i don't know um i'll probably try it next time so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one so cool i'd love to try going offshore in the gulf of mexico maybe someday